By opening your browser and going to Tools, Manage Add-ons, you can add and remove programs that have attached themselves to your browser. But another method that's a bit riskier and only suitable for the most persistent add-ons is a program from Trend Micro called Hijack This. This program must be used with care and with the help of Google to track down the function of certain plugins, your browser can be utterly cleaned of unwanted plugins and toolbars. Simply hit the scan button, then check those items you wish removed and hit fix check. Before you use Hijack This to remove browser clutter, first try to use the Add Remove program in the control panel or the Manage Add-ons menu of the Tools menu of your browser. Which brings us to Google as an excellent source for troubleshooting tips. This video could never cover all of the troubleshooting techniques and known bugs out there, but a search engine can be used to fix almost any problem you run into. The next time you receive an error message and don't know what to do, type in various words on the error window. It is almost certain that someone else has had the same problem. If an error window pops up saying some file is missing, type in the name of the file into Google and you're likely to find a host of people that have had the same problem. You're also likely to stumble across a solution. Suppose you recently installed a new webcam and the install program crashes before it finishes. Go to Google and type in the name of the webcam and the nature of the error. YouTube, for instance, is a goldmine of step-by-step -step visual tutorials. So, the next time you encounter a problem, don't call the manufacturer yet. Check the search engines like Google and YouTube instead of flipping out or reinventing the wheel. Another Google-related tip is open a new tab or window. By doing searches and right-clicking on the search matches, you may open the search match in another tab or window. This makes it much easier to quickly search large numbers of matches. Another search engine tip involves including a domain name along with the search words. Typing in Microsoft.com along with the desired search terms, you are more likely to get search results from Microsoft's website only. This is a great way to search a particular website in the case that that site doesn't have a search function. Speeding up your internet and browsing speed is also within the reach of those people who are willing to make a couple settings changes. By changing the DNS server you connect to is almost a surefire way to increase your internet browsing speed. Start by going to opendns.com and sign up for an account. In truth, however, an open DNS account is not necessary because at the end of the day, you'll be doing a settings change on your own computer. Start by going back to the control panel, then network connection. Right click on your default connection and go to properties. Select the internet protocol v4 and click properties. In the general tab, you will see use the following DNS server. Click on it and type in the following numbers. If OpenDNS.com ever goes out of service, if only temporarily, return to this very window and simply check Obtain DNS Server Automatically. A program called TCP Optimizer can optimize your internet connection settings. Download it and run the program. A quick and easy way to use the program is to first get a general idea of your download speed. Search for sites that do internet speed tests or just go to internetfrog.com and do a speed check. Notice the speed listed. Go to TCP Optimizer and approximate the download speed from the test. Then click Optimal. Then Apply Changes. A window will appear confirming your decision. There are also ways to increase the speed of your BitTorrent downloads. First, a few settings modifications in your BitTorrent client. Go to Options and then Preferences. In the menu to the left, click Connection. In the Ports for Incoming Connections edit box, type in a 5-digit number that's less than 65,000 and easy to remember. I'll use 22,222. 
Also make sure enable UPnP port mapping and enable NAYPnP port mapping are checked while randomize port at each start is unchecked. The bandwidth menu is where global upload and download speeds are modified. In order to find out the recommended settings for global upload limit, you need to find out what your upload speed is. So, go to connection speed test sites like internetfrog.com and do a speed test. The number that results is likely to be measured in bits per second rather than bytes per second. Use the on-screen graph to find out the recommended global upload limit. My upload rate is 4.4 megabits per second. So, according to my graph, I should set my global upload rate to 180 kilobytes per second. In the BitTorrent menu, make sure Enable DHT Network, Enable DHT for New Torrents, Enable Local Peer Discovery, and Allow Incoming Legacy Connections are checked. Also make sure that protocol encryption is enabled. In the queuing menu, maximum number of active turns should be at around 8, while maximum number of active downloads should be 4 to 6. In the advanced settings, change net.max half open to 50. In the disk cache settings menu, make sure reduced memory usage is unchecked. Now, if you have high-speed internet, you are likely to have a router. That router settings can be changed to slightly increase your BitTorrent downloads. First, go to the Start button, then Run. Type in CMD and hit Enter. A black command prompt window will appear, and in it, type IP config. Under Ethernet Adapter Local Area Connection, you will see two numbers of interest. The first is called Default Gateway, which, like myself, may be 192.168.1.1. The second number of interest is called the IPv4 address. In my case, my local IP address is 192.168.1.11. Yours is likely to look similar to the gateway address. Record both of these numbers. Then, open up a web browser of your choice and type in the default gateway address. Mine was 192.168.1.1. You will be prompted to enter in a username and password. Most of the time, the username is admin and the password is admin unless someone has previously changed it you may need to call your internet service provider to get past this window. Once inside your router settings, look for NAT or port forwarding. You should now be in a position to add new entries to the list before you. Add an entry and call it BitTorrent. Set it to both TCP and UDP communications. Then enter in the local IP address you recorded. Mine was 192.168.1.11. Finally, enter in the port number you chose in the BitTorrent client. If you recall, I chose 22,222. Add the BitTorrent entry to the port forwarding list, and you're done. The first thing you need to do when upgrading or replacing devices in your computer is to know what kind of motherboard you have. In order to find out the model number of the motherboard, start by getting the model number of the computer. This is usually a 4 to 6 digit number that may be on the front or back of the computer. If you find many number series on your computer and you're not sure which is your computer's model number, 